RT Bear coming to you live from Hack Shack Studios. This is my studio, my inner sanctum, if you will, where I do all my creative comic book work. So I am coming to you live, and I am very, very happy, very, very excited. I just got back page one from the great render contender. He did a fantastic pencil job on page one based on a layout, which I will show you. Hey, Shinto Ketchup. Oh, by the way, if you guys don't know, I'm trying to get you to, uh, you know, give a hey yo early in the chat so I know that I did this right. So I appreciate it, Shinto Ketchup. So hope you're doing well. And um, yeah, this is interactive too. So if you guys have any questions or whatever, please uh, don't hesitate. You know, throw those up. And I am going to be inking for you guys today. Like I said, I got the first page back for uh, Chrono Retrofit. Hey, Peter. Uh, <laughs> I think I said your name wrong last time. F-U-K. Is that Google? Fugal? F Google? <laughs> Googly? <laughs> Maybe if you can spell it phonetically, I can read it. Um, yeah, I am on. Thank you. And uh, gosh, you know what? That's going to bug me. I'm going to write this down and try to figure out how to say your name later. Uh, so anyways, hey, yo. So let me show you what I'm going to be doing here. Do, 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 do. Start camera. Let's see if this works. Boom. Yes. Here we are. Oh, there's a little doodle. This is a commission. I took some commissions. Ah, stuck to my door my uh, desk here. So this is Rogue from the Savage Land. She is roguing it in the Savage Land. That was supposed to just be a, a bust and it ended up turning into a whole figure there. So yeah, here is the doodle, the, the pencils from the great render contender. So let me see, I think I have it here somewhere. Oh yeah. So just like with black and white, I put books together so I can keep track of stuff, layouts, things like that. So this is the first page. I did a little little thumbnail and then sent this off to render, and he's helping me out with pencils. So he's kind of giving me breakdowns, so no shad shadowing, no, no rendering, uh, just kind of the bare bones of the structures and things like that. So he is going to be the reason we get this book done so quickly. And that is the goal to get this book done so quickly. Um, because I realize, you know, the learning curve can only, you can only say, oh, it's the learning curve for so long before people just go, oh yeah, well, you should know it by now. So yeah, so this is, this is the layout. So this is the way Render and I are going to work. So I do thumbnails. I don't want to show this other page here yet. And then I showed you another page. So then this is another thumbnail. So this is this is pretty much how I story tell. I don't write things out. I have I have pretty severe dyslexia. It doesn't mean I can't story tell or visually, you know, put stuff down, but it makes it hard and very, very slow for me to write. So I basically write with images. So I just rough stuff out and see how it paces out. And actually I heard that um what is his name? Keith Giffen does the same thing. So he doesn't really write plots out. He draws them and then he gives them to the penciler and they can, you know, do with what they will, I guess, but at least they know all the visual beats. So that's kind of how I work as well, but I do it because, um, yeah, it's a little, it's a little hard for me just to sit and write something out. So, yeah, so that's that. And I'm going to be inking, this bad boy up for you guys today. So I hope you're entertained. My weapon of choice is this and, and this Pelican. So this time of day, the lighting changes pretty drastically. So if it starts getting dark or the image starts getting a little weird for you guys, just let me know and I'll try to fix the lighting. So, hey, comic book Bob. Comic book, babe. Liked and shared. Oh, yeah, yeah. I always forget that. If you guys could like and share, help get the word out. Um, it helps the algorithms and gets more eyes on the channel. So I guess I need to start 
thinking of myself as a YouTuber since I spent the last year kind of YouTubing. Not quite as much as some guys, but I do at least do a stream three times a week, and then I go on other people's programs or streams. So I'm going to start, and I have the microphone right over here by the drawing board, so hopefully you guys can hear me good. I think I did one where the mic was on the other side of the room. <laughs> so one of the charms of Chrono is I don't really do anything with a, um, a ruler. Some of it might be slightly ruled, but it's mostly um, all freehand. And one of the main styles or examples that I'm pulling from, sorry guys, this nib was kinda, kinda dirty. That line's thicker than I wanted it to be, is, uh, is the French guys like Mobius and things like that. Uh, big influence. Wow, that is really thick. Hold on. This is old image board, so it now this nib is. You know what? I'm gonna change the nib. I think it's an older nib, so it's well worn, so it's put, putting down a thicker line than I want. So I usually have three or four different nibs that I work with and I use them depending on what kind of line I, I need or want. So I have more control with this one. That other one was dictating too much of uh, line weights and stuff. So the style is kind of free form and, uh, and there's a lot of dots and dashes. So where I put the dots and dashes in are kind of where I don't want the line to be real solid. This paper is 20 years old. Actually, it's 25 years old. So I don't know if it's any good or not. <laughs> I ran out of DC board. Now I have a little, I have a little bit more. And I so am thankful for the board I have. There's a lot of detail here. So this is, um, this is, you can obviously see this is Chrono Mechanics. If you guys don't know, it's about time traveling repairmen. And it's basically kind of just like a, a plumber or a air conditioner uh, or an air conditioning repairman. It's kind of like that kind of idea, but their job is to repair time. And time in this idea or this concept is literally a big machine. So it's, it's, it's big, it's broad, it's funny, it's over the top. All the time travel stuff and, and, and things aren't meant to be taken too seriously. It's all for, uh, for laughs. And so this is Chrono Incorporated. So this is the big office where they all the mechanics come in, they uh, get pulled from their timelines, they come in, they punch their time card, and they get suited up in their work clothes, and then they fly out to their respective timelines or sectors and go to the job site and repair whatever's broken there. So I don't know, it's kind of blue line. I'll hold it up closer, see if you guys can see. But this is like the main chrono offices in the center. And so these sections here are all the working bays. And so these shapes here are time ships. So these are these are the ships that the chrono mechanics get in. It moves to this little bay here and then goes down and then this rotates. And then the ship comes down the center of the screw basically. And then each one of these ports goes to their respective timeline. So they get shot out of the port and then they, then they merge onto the time stream. And the time stream is, is kind of like the freeway or the expressway. It's how they commute to work. 
And so that's what this is. You can kind of see that it's got a big clear dome over it. But what I'm inking right now are basically the offices of Chrono Incorporated. So this is where all the, the big wigs do their thing. The accountants do their number crunching, make sure they're they're all on uh, on budget. This the the people that basically have the uh, schedule the um, the jobs. You know they'll you know schedule everybody have their um, what do they call it? It's been so long since I had a normal Joe job. I guess just scheduling for their uh, next day's work. So it's basically just kind of like any normal job but that's that's the humorous part that the job is repairing time so i thought it would be interesting to do just kind of a white collar you know knuckle busting kind of idea is it white collar blue collar uh, i think it's white collar i don't know just average joe type of thing um, and they go out to different time streams to work sites and repair this big machine. And the idea came from how important those guys are that you never see. So you have a storm out and the power in your house goes out. Well, there's some guy that goes out in the middle of that storm and repairs power lines and does, you know, a job so you can have, your electricity or your phone lines or whatever it is. So there's a lot of people out there that that basically make make their way in life making things easier for us, you know, so we have a better life. And we never see these guys. I always I always thought my you know my dad was kind of like one of those guys, you know, he he worked a job, he repaired and fixed and and stuff like that. And so I always thought those guys were kind of the unsung heroes. They do things. No one really knows that they're doing it. Um, but if they don't do it, you definitely notice, you know, like if your power's out or whatever it is. So I thought it would be nice to do kind of a celebration of, of people like that, that repair like your car or your phone lines and, you know, your cable and your, your heating and cooling and all those other things. And uh, that this would basically kind of be a celebration of, of those working Joes and the juxt and we juxtapose the, the mundane, like it's their repair job with the super fantastic, which is, you know, it's time because if they don't fix time and get it done, no pun intended, in a timely fashion, then what happens is anomalies occur. And so all kinds of horrible things can happen. Uh, we, we just call it time runs amok. So time, time will run amok, meaning timelines will merge, um, all kinds of different anomalies. People from different timelines will, will show up. Um, we call them uh, well, there's time mines, then there's time merging. So you can get multiple timelines that just kind of merge and overlap on each other. And if these anomalies and these problems go on long enough, then there's no fixing anything. And so what, what happens at that point is Chrono Inc. Incorporated, which I'm inking up right now, this is their headquarters, they have to reboot time. We call it the go primal, <laughs> the go primal protocol. So they go primal. And that basically is exactly what it sounds like. They have to go back to the primordial, primordial, primordial ooze. Basically they have to start time all over again. And uh, life and time has to evolve all over again. And, uh, Chrono Ink, just to give you a little bit of back story of like what I'm inking here and who these guys are and where this location is, 
they operate outside of timelines. So they operate in kind of like a, a timeless uh, area of space in the galaxy. So Chrono Incorporated is, uh, is basically a timeless place. So the foreman who's worked there, who works there and is basically the Chrono Mechanics boss, Team 9.2, which is the story that, that I'm gonna tell. Um, it focuses on those guys is uh, he's probably been there for eternity, but when you're here and you're in this environment, you don't age. So he could be hundreds of years old and you wouldn't know it because of the timeless void that they're in. So I thought that that's like kind of a little fun side note to, uh, the story. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. I always get a little nervous. It feels kind of self-indulgent at times. I'm just talking about fun stuff I've created. <laughs> so I'm going to do this for about an hour or so. My daughter and her boyfriend are going to make dinner. So I'm going to work till dinner time. So I want to keep these lines kind of thin because everything that's in here is, is really small and detailed. And if I make things too thick, it uh, will get clunky and hard to read. So that's why I wanted this thinner pin. Let me go to the chat. I got to get my glasses. My glasses, I can't read. Hey, John Whalen. What's up? Hey, Arch Geek. Liked and shared. Got that. RT Bear Art. How often do you go through nibs? Uh, I know the newer nibs don't last as long. Um, what I do is, is when I get a brand new nib is I'll just use it until it's not getting me the line I want anymore. So like this one, if you saw earlier, it was giving me a, a really thick line. So I exchanged that for this one, which is a newer nib, but I keep these ones because I'll show you why since you asked and we got a little, it's a little Q and A to these. Uh, yeah, it's a 102. The art of, is that read, read? Okay, now I gotta take my glasses off again. So let me see. So this is the thicker nib. So it's good for these thicker lines here if the nib will work at all. So, hmm, maybe it's so old it doesn't wanna work anymore. Okay, there it goes. Okay, so this this nib throws down a lot of ink because it's older and it's worn down. And so when they get worn down, the tips aren't as sharp, but that's good for stuff like this because I'll show you in contrast what I'm talking about. Okay, keep in mind that was the more worn nib. This is the newer nib. And I'm gonna try to do the same thing I just did here with this one. See, see what, that's kind of the natural line that it gives me. And you saw me put down the thick line with the other nib. So what I do, it also saves money, is I'll keep, I'll keep the nibs so they all have a different purpose and will give me a different line. It's a little hot here today, so this ink is drying quickly. So there's a lot of fine detail in here. So I hope that helped. Let me see who asked the question. Do, 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 do. That was Comic Book Bob. Comic Book Bob has the best questions. Jim Lee is still or still has some of the paper they had made at homage in the 90s. Dude, 
<laughs> if this paper works out, I have two cases of it in the other room. So I'm hoping that this paper, you know, because sometimes paper deteriorates over time. So I'm hoping that this paper stays good. So far, it seems to be working pretty good. So that is good because I think I'd have to go to the art supply store and get some Strathmore and then start cutting it into shapes. So Vilnid, um, how are you? Welcome to the chat. I think your link to sign up for Chrono Mechanics is the wrong link. Um, I wonder if I can put the link in myself. Let me see if I can put it in the chat. I don't know how that works exactly, but let me see if I can put it in the chat. And thank you for telling me. That's very appreciative. Do, 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 do. Okay, here's a new link. Copy it, bring it over into StreamYard. Let's see if this works. Paste. Booyah. Okay. That should be the link. Wow, it's, oh, there it goes. It's very long. <laughs> Let me know in the chat if, uh, if that works. So that, um, thanks for bringing it up, uh, Vilnid is, uh, yeah, I have a pre-launch for Chrono Mechanics right now. So if you pre-launch, uh, you'll get the alert for when this goes live, which will probably go live early October, I'm hoping. I'm working on a, the video now, and the video is the only thing I really need. That, and I want this piece right here to be part of the campaign meaning I want it in the video. So uh, I got like a heavy hitter doing the video with me. And uh, I have to thank, um, what is his name? The, the Comic Bear for trying to help out with the video early on. And uh, I'm so thankful because he got the ball rolling pretty early on, which was very helpful. And uh, also... Arthur Brown, the Uncanny Kodiak, he did a, a quick video run through for me as well. But the guy that I'm working with right now is uh, Von Klaus, of all people. I was heaping a bunch of praise on him about his video for Monster MD, which, by the way, is pretty amazing. If you guys haven't checked out uh, his site, I think the book is in demand right now. After this stream, don't do it now. After the stream, go check it out and uh, back that book. It's it's amazing looking. The pitch is sharper than sharp, man. I'm so freaking jealous. Like Chrono Mechanics, I wanted to do the pitch kind of like what he did, but Chrono is so uniquely – I mean, his is very unique, but – it, it has a doctor and monsters, like universal type monsters. And most people know what those things are. So there's not a lot of explanation. But a chrono mechanic, I mean, it, it kind of, you know, conjures up, oh, they repair time or they're time repairmen. But other than that, it doesn't really explain the concept. So I wanted to do the video. Well, I don't want to give too much of the story away. But I wanted to do the video more of like, because it has a little bit of an Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz kind of vibe to it at the beginning. You know, a character that's put into a situation or brought to a world that they don't know and they don't understand, which is um, what happens in the story. So I wanted to focus kind of on that character in the video, but realize that the concept is like the high concept is more important than the actual characters are. So I had to kind of rethink the video. So it's all a creative process. And uh, I've done several like videos before for Kickstarter and, and Indiegogo, but they're each uniquely challenging in their own way because they're all different ideas and different concepts. So this one I really had to dig deep. So 
I'm working with my wife as the writer on this project. And so she's downstairs right now helping put the uh, video script together so we can get it to Von Klaus, Von Klaus. So I'm so thankful for all those people that have helped out in the uh, trying to get a chrono video going. I know it's very important and I, I'm very, very ambitious. So I always think of the most difficult way to do something because I want it to be clever and unique. And then sometimes you just have to pare it down to um, the bare essentials and kind of try to make it about, like try to distill it down to the most basic essential parts because this is a pretty heavy duty concept. That's why I don't mind telling, talking to you guys about this because everything I'm telling you right now is more concept. It's not even story. I haven't really even told you anything. It's more of a mission statement for Chrono Incorporated than it is story. So this thing is going to be freaking epic, you guys. I can't wait to get this uh, further along and get it into your hands because this story is, uh, is like I said, it's pretty darn epic. Look at all these thin, fine lines. The cool thing about uh, new printing is the new printer and the, the process, they can freaking nail this stuff. So they can print pretty much the thinnest, most detailed line you put down. So these are a little bit more structured. So they're going to have a little bit thicker line on them. And I'm not going to thicken it up all the way down here, just here, because this is kind of arching. And so you want to keep the thicks here and here and then thin them out as they go around because they help, um, they help sell the fact that it's diminishing. It's, it's moving away from you. It's a little inker trick. So if you guys watch this long enough and please share out to your friends, uh, inadvertently, I usually end up giving a bunch of tips as I'm working, as they come up. And also in the chat, if you guys have any questions, feel free. It does make it uh, less lonely. <laughs> that sounded sadder than I meant it to be. It's so lonely. And so one of the things I do stylistically is when it's an interior edge, I break it up. So you can see this, this line is solid. This line is a little broken up. I hope the camera's doing this justice. I'll hold it a little closer. And uh, so you can see that one is kind of an interior edge and the other is kind of an exterior edge. It's, it's kind of part of the chrono style. And so then I'm going to, I'm going to dissipate this line. I'm not going to connect it there. So it looks like it's kind of fading out. So one of the things that they do, the Europeans is they do a lot of these dot dash kind of things. And I absolutely love it. It's so freaking cool. And if you guys pay attention to people like uh, Travis Chires and uh, even, I can never say his name. Is it Oliver Copiel or Olivier Copel <laughs> or some combination of those two things? He does the same thing, and so does Francis Yu. So I think that Co Copiel or Olivier and um, and Francis Yu are getting it 
from Travis. So I'm sure they know the source and stuff, but I think they probably got it more from Travis initially. Like a second or third generation take on the style. Which is cool. It's all it's all good. But I'll show you guys. I'm actually starting to get my stride here. I haven't inked in this style in a while. Let me see if I can find it. So I have a bunch of these Mobius books. Well, it is a little dark. I'm going to bring these lights in and see if that helps. This camera is weird because if there's too much light, it just kind of um, destroys the detail. So I hope that helps a little bit. I can move the light in more as it gets darker outside. But yeah, so this is uh, Mobius and I, God, the style, look at this crazy, these dots and dashes and all of this stuff, the thicks and thins. It's it's absolutely amazing. To me, I hope you guys like it. So that you're going to see a lot of these influences in Chrono Mechanics. So there's that, and I have this one. These aren't even my better books. These are like the the Marvel Comics. They did. Uh, they used to do these kind of graphic novel formats. They were pretty cool. They had. They were called the Epic Line, and they were for more adults. I think they need to go back into some of this stuff instead of instead of trying to sell the Marvel Universe, adult Marvel Universe to children. Just make adult product like this and do it in an epic line or like dc used to do vertigo man i would buy the hell out of this stuff if marvel went back to this look at this this is insane oh i can smell the food downstairs this i don't know if you guys treat yourself if you don't know who mobius is yeah check it out it's it's absolutely brilliant. So yeah, that's where Travis gets some of his uh, rendering ideas from, and it's obviously where I'm getting a lot of the Chrono Mechanics inspiration. I'm not necessarily you know aping it, but the influences are definitely getting into the work. This is a. Uh, one of the time ships right now. The sh I almost I almost cuss because whenever I get passionate, I usually drop some kind of curse word. But uh, this stuff is going to blow your mind. It's already blowing my mind, and I'm working on it. It's so much fun. I really like inking in this style because anything goes. When you work for Marvel or DC, there's kind of... Uh, expectations and you have to do the work in a certain way and when you create your own character and you have your own voice as an artist you can experiment and do different things and one of one of the reasons i want to stay in this arena this creator indie arena is because this is just one of the styles black and white was another style i I like to work in a, in a lot of different styles and you know, I would like to put out a lot of different types of concepts, but draw them in different, in different styles, like use different techniques and, and different styles and, and tell the story in a unique way instead of just kind of repeating the same old, same old, maybe I just, I get bored quickly. I, I don't know if it's that or just, you know, I've been doing this for 35 years and, you know, you kind of get used to doing mainstream superhero comics in a certain way. So maybe it's more just wanting to branch out and to do something different right now. And not that I'm slamming that stuff or, or not thankful or, really proud of the work I did for Marvel and DC because it's that's 
not true. I mean, I, I stand by it. I had a great time doing all those, those jobs. And, uh, for the most part, I've always been, you know, in a top tier since I began, I think the end of my first year in comics, I started working on, you know, adventures of Superman doing finishes, not even just inking, but doing finishes on Dan Jurgens. So it just kind of kept going from there. So I'm very thankful to you guys, the readers, and very thankful to Marvel and DC and all the artists that wanted to work with me over the time uh, or my time there because I wouldn't have been able to last that long if I didn't have that support. That's one thing that's scary about doing independent work is because you don't know if there's an audience or not. Because if you work for Marvel and DC, you know that there's a there's a built-in audience and also that they get to um, market the product and they get to sell it. But when you do independent projects like this, the only voice and the only chance Chrono Mechanics and stuff like black and white will ever have is is my voice, you know, to to trumpet it and to try to, I guess, force it into reality, you know, you just kind of muscle it in to existence against some pretty incredible odds, actually. <laughs> it's pretty staggering the amount of comic books that are out there. And I'm so damn thankful for each and every one of you guys in the chat because uh, without you, you know, I would just be doing this for myself and I probably would still be doing it for, uh, you know, truth be known because <laughs> it's in my, it's in my fricking blood. Hey, wait, is dinner ready? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to go down and eat with you guys. Hey, Hey, uh, I'm just going to call this part one. If you guys want to come back in about a half hour or so, I'll finish inking this up for you. Um, that's what I'm going to be doing anyways tonight. So if you guys want to check back with me in about a half hour or so, um, I'll finish this up live chrono ink, uh, inking chrono incorporated the big, the big bolt out in timeless space. So thank you guys so much for hanging out. Comics gate has your back. Thank you so much, John Whalen. It means a lot. And, uh, yeah, tune back in a half hour. I'm probably gonna have a bunch of competition by then but hopefully you'll come back and see me finish inking this so thanks guys talk to you soon